Senator Warnock of Georgia is recognized. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of our witnesses uh, for being here. Uh, I'd like to say to uh, Mr. DeFord, uh, Jelly Roll, I, I heard your sermon uh, on the CMA, and um, I was wondering what you're doing on Sunday. Uh, that was, um, you know well from your experience that the war on drugs uh, began in 1971, ushering in federal and state policies that resulted in an explosion of drug-related arrests. Your family's been impacted by this. You've been impacted from 1975 to 2019. United States prison population ballooned from under 250,000 people to more than 1.4 million, um, a number that Dr. King, whose birthday we will celebrate in a few days, could not imagine. I often call it the new Jim Crow. The consequences of incarceration can be lasting. In many states, those who have been convicted of drug-related crimes face significant obstacles in finding a job, securing a place to live, even voting. And so the very forms of discrimination against which Dr. King and others fought have been re-inscribed within the context of America's criminal justice system. And as I've said before in this committee, my fear is that if we treat addiction simply as a law enforcement problem, we will continue to hollow out entire communities to fill our overcrowded and in some cases privatized prison systems while leaving communities no safer. And um, so I'd like to ask you, you, as you've told the story of your past, when you were a teenager, you were arrested and served time in prison for drug-related offenses, including violent ones. How has that felony conviction on your record on your record, affected you, a successful rapper, a musician, a songwriter to date? Yeah, I mean, I carry it in every way you can carry it, Senator. Uh, thanks for asking. I am, <clears throat> I am, uh, there's so many countries I'm not allowed into, which I never thought would matter until I start having hit records in Canada and Germany, and I'm not allowed to go. I'm not allowed to vote. Um, any, any core right has been restricted for me. I struggled to buy a home because homeowner insurances were trying to charge me premiums because of my felony. I mean, this thing has hit me in ways that you, that we couldn't describe. I wasn't, I've been had neighborhoods where HOAs just flat wouldn't let me live there because of my felony. I've, I have seen the effects of carrying this thing with me. And my state has a, a violent offender policy where it does zero forgiveness for violent offenses, a crime I committed when I was 15. I'll never be able to get expunged, and I carry that still today. So you, you in a real sense, are the embodiment of a story of redemption. Yes, sir. I know a little bit about redemption. I preach about it every week, and you embody that, and yet you live with this cloud over your head, una unable to, to vote and struggling to buy a home. It's hard to move forward when your past is always in your back pocket. Hmm. So, so thank you, you for that. I, I, I believe that most of the folk who are struggling with addiction need health care and need treatment, um, not permanent incarceration. There's a way in which, as you describe it, people are uh, shackled even when they're not incarcerated. Uh, do you believe that access to better care, treatment, and resources early on could have kept you out of trouble with the law? Absolutely. Um, and I, I want to be very clear that I believe drug addiction is a mental health problem, not a law enforcement problem, just so we're clear on the front end of that. I believe drug dealing is a law enforcement problem. I believe drug addiction is a mental health problem, sir. But I believe if I would have had resources in my juvenile years or more opportunities or if we focused more on education and loving and less on discipline, especially with our youth, we could get mountains moved. Well, thank you for your, your voice on this and the ways in which you're using your music and your platform to help people who are dealing with uh, addiction issues. Um, but we need you to help us to get it right uh, in terms of policy. Last year, I pushed for the Fend Off Fentanyl Act to allow for some of the illicit finances reclaimed by the government to go to the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration to provide funds for substance use disorder treatment and recovery <clears throat> and diversion programs. The chairman committed to working with me to get my provision in the bill before it goes to the floor. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to working uh, with Chairman Brown to ensure that this important provision uh, is included before this bill.
passes Congress. Again, thank you so much yes, sir. for your voice on such. I'm not educated enough to speak on this, sir, but I will say I have a feeling there's going to be more than enough money to go around. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Senator Warnock. Senator Brent